Hello, what we're going to talk about today is how to install custom firmware on an older router so that you can use it as a client bridge, a repeater, or some other function like that. The reason we often use an older router is because there's more third-party firmware available, especially in the WRT54G line of routers, and I uh, just happened to pick one up at a thrift store for around $3, so this is where I'm going to start. For this tutorial, we're going to start out with Tomato Firmware, and you can find that at PolarCloud.com. You can go to slash tomato if you want to see the screen exactly as we have it here. So once you get here, you just scroll down, and generally we want the latest version. It does have a list of routers that are supported here, and if you notice, they're all fairly old routers, because generally the custom firmware is about adding fu new functionality to old routers. If you have a newer router, then you're probably going to have to use a DDWRT, Toastman, or even Tomato USB. But for our purposes, we want the latest version, which is made in the end of 2010, so it's not really that old. And it's Tomato 1.28.zip, so we'll download that and unzip it. I won't really go into that, because if you're flashing your router firmware, you should really know how to do some basic file management already. So once we uh, get it opened, it'll show you a folder with these files right here. You'll notice there's several bin files inside the folder. And if you go over to the README file, which is included in that folder as well, you will see it has a list of which firmware to use for which router. Mine is a standard WRT54G, which is right here. So we use the WRT54G, WRT54GL. In. Now don't double click on it here. We have to actually do this through our router menu. And that's one of the great things about Tomato is the fact that you can actually flash it straight out onto these older Linksys routers. Before you flash it, you will need to reset your router. Now there's a reset button on the back. The standard practice they recommend is they call it 30-30-30 reset. You just hold the reset button in on the back uh, for 30 seconds. Then while still holding it in, you unplug for 30 seconds, and then you uh, plug back in while still holding it in for 30 more seconds. This ensures that all of the custom settings or anything that's been changed on that router is completely sent back to the factory, and the new firmware will go on very easily. It also resets the password, and the standard password on these is admin with no username. So we'll log in now. And this is actually much easier than installing DDWRT. There's no uh, SHS or a TFTP uh, needed. You don't have to hack into the Linux kernel. This one will actually flash by going to the administration menu like I just did. Then there's a sub tab called firmware upgrade. And you simply click choose file. Once that comes up, you navigate to the directory which you unzip your tomato files to and select the correct bin file that we looked up earlier. Okay, now that we have the correct bin file selected, you just click on the upgrade button down here at the bottom. Now, I may need to speed up this process in the video because depending on the speed of the router, it can take anywhere from a few seconds to up to five minutes. So we'll go ahead and click upgrade and we'll see how fast it goes. Okay, our upgrade was successful. We just click the continue button and our router will reboot. It just takes a few seconds. And you may need to re-enter your router address, 192.168.1.1. And the password will now be admin admin, so go ahead and click login. And you notice immediately that the firmware looks completely different, and this is our tomato firmware. I've expanded all the menus on the side so you can see there's a lot of additional functionality that you don't normally have in your standard router firmware. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people like is it has a lot of bandwidth with the monitoring tools, a lot of graphs and things like that. I actually prefer some of the more advanced features, uh, quality of service, advanced firewall, file sharing features, and I want to try to cover some of those in some future videos. This is a great intro to how to get a custom firmware on your router. 